Greetings and peace be unto you. This is the inspiration show entitled They Won't Leave Us Alone. Um This is this is gonna be a real sketchy, edgy video right here because normally I kinda hold back a lot of stuff that I want to really say because of worrying about algorithms and all this other jazz. But I've come now to realize and that it, it doesn't matter anymore because I'm not on here to get rich. And as much as I do care about my channel, it don't even matter anymore. It really doesn't because freedom of speech in itself is literally dead in America. America is not America anymore. You think about what is freedom of speech. It almost doesn't exist anymore. If I have an opinion and I don't like your opinion, the way to eliminate your opinion is just that, to eliminate it and not listen to what you got to say. I think that's wrong on all fronts because if I'm only listening to what you got to say and not being able to express myself what is that that's not even communication and the reason why i say this is that that's exactly what's going on today in the world we have a government that pretty much it's do as i say that's it they don't care about what the people think they don't care about what the people want there's a whole lot of propaganda and lies going on. <laughs> you, you can't get away from the whole agenda that's going on and dig deeper into what I'm saying with that because I'm not going to go that far into that because although I don't care <laughs> what they do anymore as far as my video, um, I don't want to just give it to them on a silver platter let them knock it down either but if they do knock it down so what of course i'm gonna have the master copy anyway so i have several platforms that i have anyway and i some of y'all that only follow me here on youtube don't know that anyway but i have other platforms and if it comes down to where i gotta leave youtube alone totally i can do that no problem to me. I mean, I'm not monetized. I'm not making any money off of this anyway, at least not yet. That's the, the end game, the goal. Because um, I want them to pay me and not you, the viewer. I've never asked for any money and I'm not going to. So the whole thing is, if someone has a matter of opinion, if I like black cars, gray cars, but you like red cars and green cars or yellow cars. You can't make me like what you like. In the same way, what goes on in my home, unless I care to share it with you, is my business. What I do off the clock when I'm not at work, that's my business. Unless I have an issue that directly affects my work it's not even my work's business you know so then we get into medical condition if um I have any sort of medical condition as long as it's not affecting you it shouldn't be your business I shouldn't have to tell you that I have any sort of immunity to anything. It ain't your business. Do people walk around and actually say, hi, I'm Steve, I'm HIV free? No, you'll you don't see that and you probably never will. Does anyone go around telling people that they're not, they don't have cancer? No. No one does that. As a matter of fact, 
And when's the last time you asked a question before getting in bed with somebody if they had an STD? Some people might have done that. But do you really ask that question? So you mean to tell me you don't ask that question, but you will ask somebody if they got, you know, the thing, the card. You're going to ask somebody that. You will actually ask somebody that. So with the events that happened in my city, New York, at Carmine's, how do I feel about that? I think it's wrong what happened, what transpired. I think what's even more wrong is that the fact that that guy had his whole behind hanging out and you see his drawers, you know, that's pretty much all I seen more so in the video was this dude's drawers hanging off his jeans, out of jeans, <laughs> more than the actual assault and attack that was going on to the hostess. I still can't for life me figure out why you guys wear your pants like that. That's a whole nother story. And even worse, that you women would walk down the street with somebody looking like that. Yeah, you just as, you're just as guilty walking down the street with a dude with his whole behind hanging out as him doing it. Matter of fact, it's your fault even more. Because you, you shouldn't even be walking with that guy. But maybe that's what you like. Or whatever. All good. But anyway, so I felt that was wrong what happened. You know, it shouldn't even have went there. Whole big altercation. They were, were they wrong? Yeah, they were dead wrong. Because only one person actually had the proof of whatever. And then the other people try to slide in. It's almost like when you, when you, the one person pays for the train and a couple of guys try to slide in, turnstile behind them. It's kind of like that. It's funny because I'm thinking about that because I have actually, you know, on the train now, you could just take your phone and just, you know, scan the, um, scan the turnstile and go through. Do you know, I look, actually look behind me to see if somebody's trying to trail me? Why do I do that? Because I care that they, they're trying to hop? No. I care that they're trying to get over on my dime. Because now, money is mean, money is different to me now. It's not like, money don't mean the same thing as, me that, as it mean to me when I was, even in my 20s. So, I look at every single penny, dime, dollar, whatever, as money I earn. And I ain't about to hand it over to you for nothing. I'm not doing that. The same way I worked for it, you can work for it. So if I'm going through a turnstile and you follow me through a turnstile, nah, we ain't gonna have that. I'm not, I'm not gonna have that. Just go ahead, you're better off going to the next turnstile and hopping over. Because then that's your, that's your business. But you hopping the turnstile behind me paying I got a problem with that because it's almost like I paid for you. I know it ain't that actually that, but that's the way I feel about that. It feels like that to me. But back to what I was saying. So you gonna see a lot of that going on with the Carmine situation. It's gonna be more stuff popping off like that. I don't condone it, but you know what I say? Don't even patronize in places. Not because I care or I don't care about people having, you know, the, the proof. But I look at it like, you know what? Where was the fight at last year when this clown governor and clown mayor both got together and decided to shut all these businesses down? So you couldn't make no money then. They straight shut y'all down. And then they finally let you eat a little bit. They said, all right, you can have, um, you can do takeout. And then you had the bozo governor say, oh, if you want to have your bar open, they can't just come buy a drink. They got to get something to eat too. Some people will say, well, you're making more money because they're getting something to eat. Yeah, but when the last time you went to a bar 
because you like their food. Not saying some bars don't have good food, because I don't drink, but there are some bars I know of that have decent food. But would I go there just for the food? Probably not. I'm probably going in and maybe get something because I happen to be in there. And um, I know there's one bar I go to. I go there strictly to watch the boxing matches or MMA or whatever they got. So while I'm in there, I probably get like, you know, some kind of appetizer or something. But nothing to drink. I don't drink. I drink wine, but I'm not going to buy wine out in the street, really. Like, I just get a bottle, you know, keep that home. But what I'm saying is... Now it's like they're doing the same thing again, but a little bit a little bit different. The difference is, is they're allowing you to stay open, but at what cost? They're saying you can be open, but you can only let people come in that had the proof. So how many people you think are really gonna patronize your restaurant or your place of business that have that proof? Not as much as you think. I'm gonna tell you my. I'm gonna tell you right now. I went to, what? I was all in the city today. I passed by at least three to four or five different restaurants, and half of them was empty. Empty in the middle of the day. Empty. The bartender in one of the bar places just sitting there, just wiping the bar down. I guess trying to keep busy because he has nothing going on in there. No one is coming in there to dine. They're not doing anything. You got restaurants where <laughs> they better hope that the weather stays good because they're going to have to use the outdoor dining because they can't let them inside. <laughs> so that's what's going to be going on. I guess until it gets cold. And then now, guess what? Some of these restaurants are losing more money to try to accommodate everybody. Because no one's going to want to sit outside when it starts getting cold. So guess what they got to do now? Now they got to go and get those heaters. The little heaters they got, whatever like that. That stuff probably costs a lot of money too. I don't know how much it costs, but I'm pretty sure it's not cheap. So now they got to get that stuff to go ahead and have people be comfortable, quote unquote, at the restaurant. So... You know, sitting inside, outside. <laughs> that type of stuff. And, I mean, I've done it. I went to a restaurant where I was outside, inside, whatever, as, as you call it. It was okay. Because the heat was actually very good. <laughs> but they're, they're, it better be damn good if they want me to sit outside, right? And still get my money. But how long is that going to last? How long do you think people going to just be like, you know what? All right, I'm going to sit outside. New York City gets freezing cold in the wintertime. Ain't nobody trying to sit outside. I know I'm not sitting outside. And guess what? I dealt with all of this mess when you couldn't do nothing. So guess how I feel right now that now that you could do things if you got the proof. I could care less. I look, like, I look at it like this. You're better off cooking your own meals at home. you better off being at home. Sorry to say these businesses, yeah, they're going to lose a lot of money. I don't care. That's your business, right? I bet you that business don't care if I got money or if I'm making feeding my, my family or making money. So it's mutual. We don't care about each other. But I say that to say you should not be caring about trying to do this that and that and that you know there's bigger things going on we got a whole um u.n summit this week and the president is there talking about climate change and the other thing <laughs> but meanwhile you got thirteen thousand haitians in the country that he's trying to send back to their country, you know, whatever like that. So he cared more about sending them back to Haiti than trying to help them. Now, mind you, he got the Afghans 
came here. I don't know what the number, how many of them is here, but he was willing to bend over backwards to help them. But you don't want to help the Haitians? You can't pick and choose what you want to do as a president. You have to do everything. You have to satisfy all angles. You know, one thing about me, it don't matter if I personally hear that. Personally, it don't matter if I personally like who's in power as far as a president is, is concerned or even the mayor or the governor. I don't have to like none of them. It's not about a like thing. But guess what? It's a respect thing. If I met any of the above in person, I would show them the utmost respect. A lot of y'all can't do that. A lot of y'all stuck in your feelings and stuck in whatever else be going through your head 350, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, including leap year. Whatever be going on in your head, y'all stuck in that. I'm not like that. I'm gonna tell you straight on up. I don't care for this, for this president at all, but he's a president. I respect him. I respect his office. I respect his authority. I respect that. As a man, I couldn't stand him. Can't stand him. But it don't matter. It don't matter. Growing up, some of you might not like your parents. But guess what? You had to listen to them. You had no choice. Now, the thing is, why is everybody else's problem more important than the problem right here in the country. I'd love for anybody to explain that to me. Why are we so concerned about the rest of the world and not America? Some people might think that that's selfish to think that way. Actually, it's not. Because you know what? I can almost guarantee you don't nobody care about America. Don't nobody care about us. If America went down today or tomorrow, who would really come to our aid? I'll wait. Maybe the British, maybe the Canadians, maybe the French. And notice I said maybe, maybe Israel. They have no obligation to us. Yeah, you might say they have an obligation to us because of their our allies, quote unquote. But quiet is kept. They shade to us just as much as we shade to them sometimes. But I feel we catch their back way more than they catch ours. Way more. And the amount of enemies that America has, we need to be on point. We need to be on big point. I feel like there's going to be something crazy down the line that's going to happen. And I don't know. I don't know what that might be. If I did know what it was, I wouldn't want to know. That's how I feel about that one. You know, so all I got to say with that is... You're going to definitely have to be prepared and be ready. Um, You don't know what might happen. Don't have your mind stuck on minimal things. Think forward. Think safety. Protect your family. Protect yourself. I don't see any light in the end of the tunnel right now. All I see is things getting worse and worse hopefully I'm wrong hopefully this is just you know for right now but I don't know one more thing and I'm gonna close this out cause I know I already went a long time already cause I really didn't intend to go this long but I just had stuff in my mind I had to get this stuff in my chest so I took my daughter to the doctor and I like that doctor I mean if I didn't like the doctor I wouldn't have that doctor but I like I like that doctor she seems to be very educated and knowledgeable in her field. However, <laughs> um, she is a big promoter and persuader <laughs> of the proof. So she asked me, because they're getting their physical. And she's like, hey, how you doing? You know, I ain't seen about, what, a year or so. You know, it's been a while. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, it, it, it feels like I haven't seen you in years, you know, because of everything going on. So 
the first thing she says after that is, got the proof? <laughs> so about me and the kids actually, right? And I'm like, no. <laughs> so she's like, are you going to? I said, no. Why not? What are you waiting for? I'm like, I'm not waiting. I'm not. I mean, that that's it. I'm not. Oh, oh, oh. The, the whole energy and atmosphere changed real quick. And I'm going to tell you how I give it up. If she would have been, if she would have made up in her mind that she didn't want to deal with me no more or deal with my kids no more because of that, I'm good. I'm good. As much as I can go this way, I can go that way. I'm very adaptable. And that also goes with friendships, family, what have you. If you can let something like my preference in anything affect our friendship or us as family members, if you can let that stuff affect us to the point where you feel like you don't want to deal with me no more, <laughs> it's all good. I, I feel no, no love loss, no pain. Because there should be, when you, when you are a true friend, there should be nothing that can get between you. <laughs> God forbid my best friend was to be gay or turn gay. I don't rock like that. It would bother me. But guess what? That's my boy. That's my brother. I'm not going to turn on them because of that. I might tell them, I'm like, yo, what's up? How could you do something like that? Whatever. But that ain't my business. That's his business. That's his life. You know? So I would not stop being his friend because of that. Hell, I had friends that have done crazy stuff. I mean, like all types of crazy things that I'm totally against. But because we're friends... I ain't turn my back and I'm not going to. So in the same light, if I feel that my daughter's doctors are giving a good service, a great service and giving my daughters the best care, I'm not going to cancel or eliminate that doctor because her views are different from mine. What you do is if she comes up with a, situ a view or opinion of something that she don't agree with, that's when you get a second opinion, third opinion, fourth opinion, fifth opinion, however many you need to come across your decision on something. That's how you do that. So I basically told her, I said, no, I'm not in agreement with none of that. And then I told her, I said, oh, by the way, why are we talking about all this? So when is this stuff going to stop? Because first it was two. And then I told her about three. What do you think? So she tries to throw past stuff in, at me, you know, try to bring that into the mix and says, well, polio, you need five to be totally immune. And I say, yeah, but you can't compare polio to this. And then also, that's something that's when you like, you know, when you're growing up, you get that. I think as a kid or a teenager, I don't remember when I might've got that, but that's back then. And it's a proven thing over time. Now, some may say, well, this has been around. They've, they've had ways of proving this. Really, really. So the stuff that was out before this was actually some ways worse and we didn't have the craziness that we doing right now we weren't running around with masks we weren't running around with um you know talking about we need a shot or this is none of that stuff SARS was killing people and so was daggone Ebola and we were still shaking hands and all this other stuff but all of a sudden now it's like nah this right here this is it we can't we can't um we can't play with this one like that. But if you just saw the Emmy Awards, <laughs> look at the Emmy Awards. That was like 
what they used to call it, a spreader event, a super spreader event. If there's such thing as a super spreader event, that was it right there. You know, and I'm going to tell you, if I never go to another Yankee game again or any type of sporting event, well, actually, I'm going to a football game in a couple of weeks. But if I wasn't able to go to any of that again, I could care less. Hell, football, you better off watching it at home anyway because... You go to a football game, you're going to pay about $500 for a, take or a ticket. And you're going to pay like $100 for a beer. So, and like I said, I don't drink anyway, so I don't care. But I'm just saying in general. You're going to spend more money than if you just stayed at home and just ordered some stuff to eat at home and just watch the game in comfort. Without being out in the freezing cold or whatever like that. Same thing with baseball. I mean... You know, you see one game, you probably seen them all. Unless it's like something like the playoffs or something like that. It's really no big deal. You ain't really missing out on nothing. It's funny how on TV all day long, enjoy New York. New York is back. You want to go out again. You know, enjoy the nightlife, enjoy the movies, the entertainment. Enjoy Broadway plays and eating in, dining in. Man, I did all that already. <laughs> I already did that several times. If I never do it again, then so what? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? I'm free. I'm free no matter what. I don't care about all that stuff. You think I need all that stuff to make me feel good about myself? If you need any of that stuff I just mentioned... To make you feel good about yourself uh, I'm not going to say that But you can pretty much figure out what I'm about to say next If you need those things to make you feel good about yourself You already got problems anyway So you don't need that stuff to make you feel good about yourself You should be able to do that on your own well, Anyway I'm just going all, all too long with this whole thing I just hope that uh, I'm making somebody think for themselves that's my whole main purpose and goal in this video is to make you think for yourself and stop feeling like as if <laughs> you got to listen and do everything the government tells you to do. I notice that the same people that be like, you know, F the cops and all this other stuff, y'all the first ones that stand in line <laughs> to listen to the government. But make that make sense. Keep the same energy you have towards the police, towards the government. I bet you won't. Nah, you ain't playing the government like that, right? Nah. Whatever. Don't make me no 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 difference, no nothing. <laughs> I don't feel no different. But anyways, like, comment, share, subscribe. Faith, health. Wealth Success Stay true to yourself If nobody else I added that one in there That's a new one I might start saying that one now I like that <laughs> Peace